Chapter 1. Iron Pillar of Delhi. Standing in the heart of the Qutub complex, a massive iron column rises over 23 feet into the sky. Tourists walk past it daily, barely noticing what makes it extraordinary. This pillar has withstood over 16 centuries without a trace of rust. Rain, humidity, scorching heat, none of it matters. While modern iron structures corrode within decades, this ancient monument remains flawless. Scientists have analyzed its composition for years, discovering something remarkable. The iron contains an unusually high concentration of phosphorus, creating a protective crystalline layer. But here's the mystery. How did ancient metalworkers possess such advanced metallurgical knowledge? No known civilization from that era had documented this specific technique. Engineers have attempted to recreate the pillar using historical methods. Every attempt has failed. The surface is covered with Sanskrit inscriptions celebrating a king named Chandra. Yet the text reveals nothing about the forging process itself. Could this pillar be evidence of a sophisticated scientific understanding that vanished from human memory? The precision required to create such pure iron suggests technology far beyond what history books tell us. Standing before it, you can't help but feel its weight in time. Untouched, unbroken, almost defying the natural laws of decay. Chapter 2. London Mithraea. Construction workers break ground beneath the city streets, expecting nothing but dirt and debris. Their shovels strike something solid. Stone walls emerge from the earth. Archaeologists arrive and identify it immediately, a Roman temple dedicated to Mithras, the London Mithraeum. Inside, they find the usual relics, altars, statues, ceremonial objects. But then, something unusual appears. Small carved tablets depicting astronomical calculations as shouldn't exist in Roman times. Symbols that resemble modern mathematical notations. Miniature mechanisms with gear-like structures, their purpose unclear. Experts examine these objects closely, searching for explanations. Were they purely decorative or functional tools? The inscriptions on the temple walls describe rituals connected to cosmic events. Solstices, equinoxes, planetary alignments. The level of astronomical precision suggests the Romans here possess knowledge far exceeding standard historical records. Some artifacts show wear patterns consistent with regular use, not just ceremonial display. Could this temple have been a secret school for advanced learning? Evidence suggests this wasn't merely a religious site, but a repository of forbidden knowledge. Chapter 3. California Coso Artifact. Three rockhounds venture into the barren wilderness near Alancha searching for geodes. The sun beats down mercilessly as they scan the rocky terrain. Hours pass with little success. Then one particular stone catches their attention. It's heavier than expected, denser somehow. They take it home, eager to crack it open and reveal the crystals inside. On the workbench, a saw cuts through the outer layers. The blade hits something hard, metal. Their excitement turns to confusion as the rock splits apart. Embedded within ancient stone sits what appears to be a metallic cylinder. White porcelain surrounds a copper core, corroded but perfectly formed. It looks exactly like a modern spark plug. But that's impossible. The surrounding rock matrix is dated to approximately 500,000 years old. Half a million years before humans invented electricity, engines, or anything requiring spark ignition. But the oxidation patterns tell a different story. The corrosion on the metal matches the age of the surrounding stone. X-ray analysis reveals internal structures consistent with manufactured components. Could this be remnants of a civilization that existed before recorded history? Or evidence that time doesn't flow in just one direction? Chapter 4. Great Serpent Mountain. From ground level, it appears as gentle hills rolling across the landscape. But from above, an astonishing pattern emerges. A massive earthwork shaped like a serpent 
stretching over 1,300 feet in length. This is not a natural formation. Ancient peoples moved thousands of tons of earth to create this monument. Carbon dating places its construction around 1000 BCE, possibly earlier. The precision is breathtaking. The serpent's curves align perfectly with the summer solstice sunset. Its head points toward the spot where the sun sets during the winter solstice. For a culture without modern surveying equipment, this level of astronomical accuracy seems impossible. Recent ground-penetrating radar surveys have revealed hidden chambers beneath the mound. Some sections align with lunar cycles. Others point toward distant star formations. Mathematical analysis shows the proportions follow complex geometric principles. Archaeologists debate endlessly about its creators. Charcoal samples from different sections show construction phases spanning centuries. Why would ancient societies invest such enormous effort into celestial alignments? Or communicating something to observers who would see it from above something impossible in their era? Chapter 5. Chronovisor. In quiet academic circles, whispers circulate about an extraordinary device. A machine that could pierce the veil of time itself. They called it the chronovisor. Most dismissed it as fantasy a tale spun by imaginative priests. But the details were too specific to ignore. Father Pellegrino Ernetti, a respected physicist and theologian, claimed he and a team had built it. The device supposedly used electromagnetic radiation to capture light particles from ancient times. According to descriptions, it resembled a complex television set. Multiple screens, numerous dials, and controls for tuning into specific locations and time periods. Users could allegedly witness historical events as they originally occurred. The crucifixion of Christ. The destruction of Sodom. Cicero delivering speeches. Ernetti provided photographs as evidence. One showed Christ on the cross. Analysis revealed the image was nearly identical to a common devotional sculpture. Yet Ernetti never recanted his story. He claimed the Vatican ordered the chronovisor dismantled, fearing its power. What if people could witness embarrassing historical truths? What if governments could spy on anyone in history? The chronovisor remains one of history's most tantalizing mysteries. Real or elaborate thought experiment? Chapter 6. Clerkstorp's Fears Miners work deep underground in the Wonderstone Silver Mine near Otistol. The rock they extract is incredibly old. Precambrian formations dating back billions of years. Then someone notices something strange in the debris. A small sphere, perfectly round. Then another. And another. Over the following years, hundreds of these metallic spheres are discovered. In rock layers dated to 2.8 billion years old long before complex life existed on Earth, long before oxygen filled the atmosphere. The spheres vary in appearance. Some are smooth, almost polished. Others feature three parallel grooves encircling their equators with mechanical precision. Geologists are baffled. Natural processes can create spherical formations, but the grooves are too precise, too uniform, appearing manufactured rather than geological. Hardness tests show the spheres are harder than steel, rating approximately 5.5 on the Mohs scale. Lab analysis reveals they're composed of pyrite and other minerals. Some spheres are hollow with spongy material inside. Others are solid throughout. When placed on flat surface, several specimens exhibit unusual rotational properties, spinning for extended periods. Could these be remnants of something we don't yet understand? Or artifacts that somehow traveled backward through time? 